Cyclone Citrang finally named and developing in the Bay of Bengal on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 24th. Looking around the world right now, Roslyn, after making a Category 3 landfall in the early hours of this morning, moving well inland, is about to perish over central Mexico, and uh, Tropical Storm Citrang, finally named after we've been waiting for weeks, it seems, for this thing to form, um, and is headed towards the Ganges River Delta region, and could be a substantial landfall. On day 146 of Atlantic hurricane season, we've now deactivated the uh, area of interest that we were looking at in the central Atlantic, and we're back to no areas of interest in the next five days. A calm and quiet Atlantic, will it be that way till the end of the season? I wouldn't bet on it. Eastern Pacific, Rosling continuing to uh, push very quickly towards the northeast, still a tropical storm, only for a little while longer, and they may even downgrade it at the next advisory, which pretty much comes out at the same time as our update. What's left of it will potentially cause some severe weather in the US. And one area of interest that we're still watching in the Western Pacific, it's been a, a story, it's been a, a, a trip with this one as well. And it is now a 70% chance and it looks increasingly likely that it is going to finally develop in the next couple of days. Indian Ocean Tropical Storm Citrang is now already fairly close to the coast and it will hang around there for a little bit and then eventually make landfall probably tomorrow afternoon or this afternoon as it would be in India, Monday afternoon slash evening, although some models suggest it might be later on in the night. Let's check some satellite imagery right now and this is what the Atlantic is looking like at this moment and you can see just a few little bursts of uh, convection and obviously on the right hand side in the central Atlantic zone there into the Sargasso Sea now, that area of interest that we were monitoring, NHC I believe still have it on their books. Uh, but not looking great. Neither is Roslyn, you can see it there, still got some rotation as it continues northeastwards, not far from Monterey now actually, um, and still producing probably fair amounts of rainfall, although we're only expecting probably around 50 to 100 millimeters more in any given location. And let's look at that in detail. Uh, there is uh, pretty much the center of Roslyn, still on the rapid scan mesoscale imagery. Um, most of the well, the whole storm now is inland out at sea there there's nothing really going on um, so that whole storm is producing potentially significant amounts of rain in some areas of course dry areas of Mexico as well further north so the potential for flash flooding is significant here is the Western Pacific and the Indian Ocean in the distance over there on the left hand side so you can clearly see Citrang we'll get a close look shortly but the Western Pacific there still looking fairly quiet uh, and you can see that disturbance down towards the south and here is Citrang and it is uh, quite consistent with a typical Indian Ocean storm producing very large big bursts of convection it's still struggling with its center of circulation it's quite an elongated one actually um, and towards the northern side of the storm it's pushing up inland now in some areas uh, some locations in the Ganges River Delta region could get quite a lot of rainfall and we'll examine that in more detail in a few moments on the models uh, but you can clearly see underneath those red zones that's very high convective tops and usually means high amounts of rainfall underneath it uh, but developing quite well and it could strengthen a little bit more before it reaches landfall. I'm going to look at the western pacific there just looking at that tropical disturbance once again starting to get a little bit of rotation about it and convection blowing up mainly displaced to the east and southern side of it uh, but that's going to be something fairly soon and chances continuing to rise uh, almost all models now are on board with that and the GFS wanting a significant typhoon which we'll take a look at in a few moments. Uh, there's the Indian Ocean once again, Citrang there earlier on bursting up loads of big 80, minus 80 degree cloud top convective tops. Um, so certainly got a lot of energy in it, uh, That not much of that will convert to wind speeds, a lot of that will convert to rainfall. Southern Hemisphere, that uh, system that was passing close to Brisbane, continuing southwards down to New South Wales now in the eastern coast of Australia. Um, it had a little shot of becoming a subtropical storm um, and it wasn't too far away from actually happening, but it never did. And there it goes, still causing substantial uh, flooding issues there though. 
Sea surface temperatures right now in the eastern Pacific. If we do get another late season storm, they're still favourable. 29 degrees probably in some areas and 30 degree isotherms in a few parts of the Caribbean Sea near Jamaica, near Cuba and uh, near Haiti. And with some warmer temperatures still extending further north as well. So the Atlantic is in pretty good shape even as we enter the later part of this season. Can't rule out one or two more substantial storms. Indian Ocean, Citrang is about to enter the most favourable area there for sea surface temperatures, 30 degrees in that patch on the northeastern part of the Bay of Bengal, right along the coast of Bangladesh and Myanmar. In the western Pacific, temperatures falling a little bit in the South China Sea, but in the Philippine Sea still staying very warm, certainly enough to sustain several more strong typhoons, I'd wager. Uh, certainly that system that is going to enter the Philippine Sea yeah, got a decent chance there with those sea surface temperatures pushing 29 or 30 degrees. The anomalies, it's above average in the Indian Ocean and in the Western Pacific overall. La Nina still in place in the Eastern Pacific and only just around average in general. Some well above, some well below. And the Atlantic is generally above average. Gulf of Mexico shutting down a little bit now, especially further north. Oceanic heat content looks like this in the Atlantic. A similar pattern to what we've seen in recent months. Uh, the Caribbean is still piping hot and full of energy there. If anything does end up in that, in that sub-basin, you could call it, uh, the Caribbean Sea, even in November, has a decent chance. In the Eastern Pacific, only a few little blobs left now, and in the Western Pacific, it's starting to die down a little bit, but still near the coast of the Philippines, we know what it can be like late season. Let's check the GFS computer models then, and this is how it currently looks for the short term, up to five days. You can still see that Atlantic system moving up towards Maine and uh, Atlantic Canada. And that other system behind it, right towards the end of that five day period, potentially becoming a cyclone to look for again. So two systems there that could have a little bit of uh, monitoring and interest about them. Uh, we'll see what happens. What are we looking at next? The Western Pacific. So this is what happens from this invest that's currently in the Philippine Sea. It eventually on the GFS gets itself together, wraps around quite tightly on the 26th, that's two days from now, and quickly develops into a typhoon and then goes much further, becoming a strong major typhoon there within that five day period. That's probably category three there and intensifying by the time we get to the end of that day five loop. Uh, but that's the main thing to watch in the Western Pacific, of course. We were thinking it might have been going for the Philippines in earlier model runs, but it looks like that threat is diminishing. Indian Ocean and checking out this uh, Cyclone Citrang, of course. A quick landfall favoured by the GFS, probably in the uh, mid to late afternoon hours. Some models suggesting it's going to be later. The icon particularly suggesting that it could be pretty much midnight by the time the storm makes landfall on Monday night. And it makes landfall very quickly there. Uh, possibly gets near hurricane force. Uh, the more time it has over water equals the more time that it actually has to strengthen. And that will also increase the potential for rainfall. And here are the rainfall charts from the GFS. And you can see just a little slither there of pink near the actual landfall zone. Um, obviously again near the Ganges River Delta and that's 16 inches that little pink zone which is 400 millimeters so that's a lot of rainfall for that area an area of course that is sensitive to uh, significant storms like this um, rainfall probably not so much for landslides except further inland which you can see is still going to get six or seven inches of rain 150 millimeters uh, but certainly adding on to a potential storm surge that 16 inches of rain will not be helpful for those areas and we foresee potentially some substantial flooding there so hopefully all preparations and uh, warnings have been uh, given out for this storm as it arrives probably on uh, Monday afternoon slash evening. Let's check the longer range then, day 5 through 10 and here's what the Atlantic has on the table, that system that might you know, speculatively end up becoming a cyclone and it has a short lifespan there and dies off. And then later on in that 10 day period, near the end of that loop, you can see the Caribbean starting to warm up again, uh, potentially there. It looks like something was trying to form. Let's just watch that sequence again. There's some rotation that starts to become evident on the 31st into the 1st of November. Yep, there it is. And that's probably trying to become a tropical cyclone. 
Western Pacific, what happens to the powerful typhoon? Well, it strengthens even more. It gets to probably significant Category 4 status. I think I clocked the GFS having it uh, a pressure peak of 936 or so, or maybe even lower than that. And then shooting off northeastwards, becoming a uh, powerful extratropical storm as well. We've had a few storms like that this year, actually. And that would be another one to the list. Uh, it gets quite far north, uh, considering the time of year. Um, just about on the very threshold there. Uh, of what you would expect in late October. And in the Southern Hemisphere, another sign of life. Uh, we've been watching this for a little while, but GFS uh, going through a different part of the ocean compared to yesterday and more uh, close up in terms of the range. And there's a storm forming near the end of that 10 day period in the central part of the South Indian Ocean, not too far probably from Diego Garcia. Uh, and looks like it develops quite nicely towards the end of that loop towards day 10. Shouldn't be a land threat. At this point, uh, scan the barcode. It will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all kinds of things, including full season and individual animations bespoke on request uh, for your choosing and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt, which are still very available because we are still waiting for Hone. In the silly range then, this is where the serious stuff ends and the silly stuff starts. Well, what happens to that Atlantic system? Eventually it does get its act What's that? Two systems possibly there? And the main feature uh, becomes a hurricane landfall for the Dominican Republic and then Take a look at that track moving slowly across Haiti and then over eastern Cuba. Uh, we saw a similar, tr not similar track, but a track yesterday that took it past Jamaica and stalling near Haiti. Shades of flora in both of these tracks, if I'm being honest. So uh, long range there, if there's any truth to that, it would be a concern. And let's look at this region, the Indochina region. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, what are we looking at in the long range there? and a little system forming west of the Philippine Islands and eventually becoming a little tropical cyclone there on the 7th slash 8th of November. There it is, getting stronger. And in the Indian Ocean, another system forming right at the end of that 16-day loop as that other tropical cyclone in the Southern Hemisphere uh, moves downwards off the screen very early on in that loop. So uh, interesting and normal positions that you would expect tropical cyclone development late in the season like this. Uh, but that's what the GFS is suggesting up to day 16. Well, on this day, we go back to a very old uh, situation on October 24th, 1921. Uh, 6L in the Atlantic was peaking as a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, the next day it would end up making landfall near Tampa Bay. Yes, it's the Tampa Bay Hurricane, which of course was compared so much to uh, Hurricane Ian in its earlier stages. Tampa Bay Hurricane caused substantial damage in that area when it made a Category 3 landfall on the 25th. We also had an unnamed and undesignated tropical depression in the Indian Ocean, and as far as we know it peaked as a tropical depression as well. Back to this year. Funny how that was 101 years ago now. Um, don't think anyone remembers it though. The next name on the Atlantic naming list is Lisa. In the Eastern Pacific, it's still Seymour. And in the Central Pacific, we are indeed still waiting for Hone. And I think a few of us might be 101 before that happens. In the Western Pacific, the next name is uh, Nalgi. And in the North Indian Ocean, we are now looking out for our next name storm, which would be Mandus. Of course, Citrang forming just today and we're waiting so long for it to actually form. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Cheniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll have another one with you tomorrow night.